Masechet Pesachim, Taf Samech Aleph, uh, we're continuing to speak about the having right the proper intention with uh, korbanot. It's not only the um, the the activity that counts, but also the thought. And so, while one one is doing the major four uh, uh, act, uh, actions of slaughtering and then receiving the blood and walking the blood to the mizbeach and sprinkling the blood, uh, one has to have all proper intention uh, for that. Uh, okay, so we're going to talk about different cases of possibilities of wrong intention. Uh, really, two major questions. One, um, if someone intends it for the wrong owner, uh, does that invalidate a Pesach offering that's not on the 14th of Nisan? All right, we'll talk about that case, and we'll see the next Mishnah about um, having in mind invalid eaters, um, doing the Pesach at the, uh, at the wrong time of the day. And then another interesting case about intends at slaughter time that uncircumcised people should receive the atonement when he's gonna sprinkle it. All right, it's a complex case, but we'll see all the, the uh, different arguments for and against, and in the end, we will reject both. And uh, tomorrow we'll see another argument about that. Okay, so let's start with the first case here. Iba Yalehu. Pesach sheshechato bishadim otashana beshinui ba'alim mahu so here's the rule. On Pesach, if I, I, I designate the uh, a lamb, to, and this will be my Korban Pesach. If on Pesach I have in mind while I'm doing Shechita that I'm, this is going to be a Shalamim, then it's invalid. I have to have on Pesach, I have to have in mind I'm doing Shechita for a Pesach. That's clear. Now, what if I didn't do Shechita on, uh, on Erev Pesach, as, as I was expecting to, and now I'm two weeks after Pesach, and I still have this lamb that I had designated as a Korban Pesach. What am I going to do with it, right? I can't just eat it. It's Kodesh, but it's, can't, I can't make a Korban Pesach because it's not Pesach anymore. So therefore, here's what I have to do. I have to do Shechita with having in mind that this will be for Shelamim. Even though that's a bad thing to do on Erev Pesach, that's a good thing to do when it's two weeks after Pesach. And by doing that, I am uprooting the designation as Pesach, but still keeping it a valid korban because I say this is a shalamim. Good. That everyone agrees with. Now the question is, what if I have in mind a different invalidation uh, two weeks after Pesach? Not that this is going to be a korban shalamim, but rather, even though uh, Bob uh, donated this, this uh, sacrifice, the I'm the Kohen, I'm, I'm going to have in mind that I'm doing the Shechita for Joe, a different person. Now, if that was Erev Pesach, it would be no good because I have to have in mind the person who donated it. The question is, now that I'm two weeks after Pesach, if I have a different Baal in mind, does that invalidate it altogether? Not even good after two weeks after Pesach, or does that actually work the other way around? Just like by having intention of a different type of Korban, that's called Shinui Kodesh, um, and that makes it actually valid um, two weeks after Pesach because everything's like opposite day um, when it's after Pesach. Do I say also that an invalidation of a uh, different Baal also uproots its status but actually makes it not a, kod- not a Korban Pesach but a valid Korban, something else, a Shalamim for this Baal, right? Do I have to just change something or is it only if I change the Kodesh? That's the question. All right, we'll see two uh, both ways. Amadav Papa, Amrita Lishmata, Kameh de Rava. The Papa was a student of Rava, and uh, he presented, a lot, oftentimes students would present possibilities before their teacher. And he says as follows, Ho'il v'shinui kodesh poslo bizmano. Bizmano means on Erev Pesach, if I change it from having in mind as a Pesach, instead I think of it as a Shalamim, invalid. Also on Erev Pesach, if I have in mind a different person to that, don't, that I'm, I'm, does, I'm slaughtering it for a different owner, also it's no good. So therefore, they should, these two types of invalidate, invalid thoughts should be the same. Uh, just like if I change from a, uh, having in mind the Korban Pesach to a Shalamim, that is no good on Erev Pesach, but actually makes it valid two weeks after Pesach. So too, if I have a different owner in mind, 
um, that makes it invalid on Erev Pesach, but that should also sim similarly make it actually valid during Pesach. This is a very interesting argument that I just have to do something to uh, change the status of the Korban that I had designated as Pesach, and even doing something that seems like it's bad actually ends up being good because I have to somehow undo that Pesach status and now make it a Shalamim. That's what the student said. But the teacher, Ravad, did not accept it. He says, you cannot compare the two. Um, when I change the Kodesh, in other words, I change the status of, of the type of sacrifice from a Pesach to a Shalamim, that is an invalidation in the animal itself. Uh, and it also is invalid regarding any of the four activities that I do. If I have in mind a different type of sacrifice, it's invalid. And it's also invalid after the death of the owner, uh, even after the death of the owner, and then the, uh, the, the, uh, the children, the inheritors, will bring the korban, and I have a wrong korban in mind, it's still invalid. And also it applies with a sibur and yachid, whether it's a korban sibur, and I have in mind this will be, you know, not, a, not an ola, it'll be a chatat, something else, it's also invalid. Tomar b'shinui ba'alim, I cannot compare that to a change in a different owner, because that doesn't, uh, these four categories don't apply when I think of a different owner. In other words, these two things are just not comparable uh, uh, categories. Here, the end pistolo begufo. When I have a different owner in mind, it's from thinking about who donated it. It's not about the animal itself, what kind of animal it is. And also, veno barba avodot. Of having a different owner in mind, I only have to do the sprinkling for the sake of the owner. Why? The sprinkling is the main thing that achieves atonement. For the, for the owner. And so if I have a different owner in mind during Shechita, during the other ones, it's okay. Not so if I have a different status of type of uh, uh, animal in mind. That applies to all four. If the original owner dies, and now it goes to the inheritors, so obviously I'm not going to have in mind the original owner, he's dead. So I'm going to have a different owner in mind, and that would be okay. A korban sibur doesn't have an owner. Everybody owns it. So therefore, if I have in mind a different person, it doesn't make sense. So um, therefore, Rava is saying, these are totally different categories. Okay, so um, Rava would say, that change a change in Baalim after Pesach uh, actually just invalidates the Korban altogether. Um, now, regarding these, this four comparison, we have a, a, a note here. Out of these four, actually two of them are not quite precise. This is like a commentary, you know, commentator uh, uh, saying while the, this rabbi is giving this lecture, actually two of them are, are more comparable than he, may, than he seems. But still the other two are, are precise, that there's a difference in status between changing the code, the type of animal, and, and, and changing the uh, who the owner is. Um, regarding the, 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 the thought, uh, the, both of them are not in the animal itself. A psul in the animal itself might be like, if it has no eye, right? Um, but here, it's both in the mind of the Kohen. Either he has in mind that this is going to be a different type of korban or a different owner. It's not really inherent in the animal, but rather in the mind of the of the Kohen. So in that way, they're actually kind of similar. And second, the other difference that you said that um, uh, if, if the owner dies and it doesn't matter if I have a different owner in mind, that's not true according to everybody. According to the Pinchas, you do have to still have in mind the original owner, even after he dies. And if I would make the sacrifice for a different person, then the, uh, we, the uh, 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 children would have to bring another korban for the sake of their father. Um, so, but the other two are in fact precise. So he's right to say that there's a distinction between the two types of uh, invalid intention. Therefore, Rava concludes that whether on Erev Pesach or uh, two weeks, anytime after Pesach, if I had the wrong uh, owner in mind, different than the original owner, the, it's disqualified. So if I want to bring a Korban Pesach, 
that I didn't get a chance to bring on Erev Pesach, and I want to bring it after Pesach, I still have to have the same owner in mind, but I have to just change it from a Korban Pesach to a Korban Shelamim. All right, and now the next Mishnah, um, uh, also with uh, having uh, uh, improper intention. Oh, here, while I'm doing Shechita, Shechato Shelo Leochlav, Veshelo Limnuyav, Laarelim Velatimeim, Pasul. While I'm doing shechita, I say I'm going to do shechita for people that can, cannot, don't have the physical ability to eat uh, the, the the sacrifice. Maybe they're sick or they're old, and so they cannot even eat a kezayit. They can't get it down, and so I'm doing shechita for their for them. No good because they need to eat it. Um, also, people that did not register, right? You gotta you gotta uh, um, register for. Uh, that korban, uh, put your name in, say, you know, you have to tell the person, this, um, I'm going to join in with your korban. And if you have in mind people that are not registered, a different group, no good. Uh, and people who are uncircumcised or impure, they also cannot take part in korban Pesach. If I have them, if the Kohen has them in mind when he's doing shechita, it's no good. Uh, pasul. However, let's say he has mixed intention. He has in mind the whole group of people, and some of the people have the ability to eat it, some people don't have the ability to eat it. That's okay, because at least some of them will eat it. Right? While he's doing shechita, he has to know that it will be eaten, even if not every single person. Right? In other words, one invalid person doesn't invalidate the whole group. Or people, some people that did register in the group, and some people that didn't register. Right? I kind of had that person in mind. It's okay. La mulim vila adelim, la temelim vila tehorim. So for some people that are circumcised and other people that are uncircumcised. When we're talking about uncircumcised, we're not usually talking about someone who's just, you know, disregarding the law, but there's a legal uh, reason if someone has two brothers who got circumcision and died because of it, then the next uh, son does not have to uh, ha get circumcision. It's obviously dangerous. Um, so, but even so, even though he has a good reason, uh, nevertheless, um, he cannot eat Koban Pesach, but as long as you have some people in mind that can eat it, it's okay. Some people Tameh, some people Tahor, Tameh people cannot eat it, but since the Tahor you include it also, so the mixed intention, that's fine, because some people can eat it. Good. Now, this is not about intention, but just about timing. Shechado kodem hasot pasul. ben Pesach has to be done in the afternoon. If you did it in the morning, it's not a valid sacrifice. Shechato kodem letamid kasher. We said that even though the korban tamid is the last korban of the day, that's except for korban Pesach, which is in fact after um, afterwards. Uh, so, if but if you did it. Uh, before the tamid, b'di avad, it's okay. It's, it's still a good korban pesach. Well, uh, v'chiyachet memares b'damo ad sheyizarek hatamid. As long as you have someone mixing the blood, so it doesn't coagulate, and you keep mixing the blood of the korban pesach until you bring the korban tamid, and then even though you did shechita of the korban pesach before, uh, as long as you um, as you as you pour, pour it on the mizbeach after the korban tamid, that's good. Vim nizrak. Kasher. And even Bidi Avad, if it was in fact sprinkled also on, on the Mizbeach before the Korban Tamid, it's still valid. So it needs to be in the afternoon. There's no, uh, no, no getting around that. You're supposed to do it after Korban Tamid. If you did it before the Korban Tamid, it's a Bidi Avad, it's okay. All right, now we're going to focus on the first half uh, of the, this case here. Tanura Banan, we're going to go through each um, uh, um, item and explain it further. Tanura Banan, Kesad, Shelol Ochlav. What do you mean, someone who can't eat it? If he's uh, or sick or old um, and he's not able to, uh, to chew, he can't eat it. What do you mean, someone who's not registered? That there was a group A said, this is our korban. And while the, the, the shochet was doing shechita, he had in mind group B. He got mixed up. Okay. Uh, that's not good. It's, uh, he, he has to he gotta go get another one. What's the source? The Tanura Banan Be Mirsat. The full Pasuk is um every house was supposed to go and get a lamb for, for itself. But if the house is too small, there's only four people in that household. They can't eat a whole lamb. So then they go together with his neighbor and they join in a group. According to the count 
of the people. Ish lefi ochlo tachosu al hase. The word tachosu means to count or compute. So each according to how much they eat, they will be counted uh, in the in the lamb, right? So you get enough people that can consume a whole lamb. So since it says bimichsat melamed she'en a pesach nishrat ela limnuyav, right? That you that means that you have to pre-register and designate that you are going to eat this korban. If you didn't pre-register, you cannot, it's, you know, that you cannot register after it's slaughtered. You cannot eat it after it's slaughtered. So therefore, while you're slaughtering it, you have to have in mind that this is only for this group of people that registered. Now, maybe you'll think, there's only the chatechila you have to. But maybe if you didn't register, okay, you violated the law by, of not registering, but maybe it's still valid and I can still take part uh, in, the, in that. And that means, in other words, if I, uh, the shochet did the shechita for group A, but really it was group Bs. And so now they, they made a mistake and they violated one law. You might think, but nevertheless, the Koban Pesach is still a valid Koban Pesach. The Pasuk says this word twice. Hakatuv. Shana alav le'akev. It said it repeated it in order to say it's an absolute requirement. Even bidi avad, you did it already. No, you can't. It's an invalid korban pesach. Uh, the B Omer, the B learns that agrees with the law, but learns it from it in a different way. Lashon sursihu. He says the word tachosu uh, or b'michsat uh, is uh, actually a Syriac word. Uh, in which it means slaughter. So he says, slaughter this for me. So you have to give a command and say, this is going to be for me. And if you didn't say it's for me, then you can't join it. Uh, so he's not learning from the double language, but from the, his, what he, his definition of that word itself. All right, good. So now we uh, derive that you have to register. Well, and if you have in mind people didn't register, it's no good. What's the source that people who cannot eat it also, um, you, can, can, you shouldn't have them in mind, if you have them only in mind. Since in that same pasuk, it says, each person according to what he can eat, he's counted. So you can only count those who are able to eat it. So as long as some people can eat it, it's fine. But if all the people that you have in mind are unable to eat a, a, a kazayit of the meat, then it, the korban is invalid. Okay, um, so, so far that was the easy part. Now we're going to deal with the more complicated question. Shechato lamulin al menat sheyit kaperu bo arelim bazrika. So I'm doing shechita now. And now during Shechita, I have in mind, I'm doing Shechita for those who are circumcised. That's good. If I did Shechita for only uncircumcised people, it would not be good. It would not be good. But I'm doing Shechita for circumcised people. But while I'm doing Shechita, I have in mind that later, in a few minutes, when this gets sprinkled on the Mizbeach, then that sprinkling should be effective also for those who are uncircumcised. In other words, he wants that those who are uncircumcised, even though they cannot take part and eat the Korban Pesach, that this should be effective for them in achieving atonement. The truth is that Korban Pesach is not really for atonement, um, but in all, all Korbanot are in some sense atonement. And so they should be included in the uh, effectiveness of the Korban Pesach through the sprinkling. That's what that, that's, that's the question. Um, if he has them in mind only during the sprinkling, let's say while he's doing the sprinkling, I'm sprinkling this for people who are uncircumcised. That would be okay because the circumcised, uncircumcised thing is only a problem during shechita when that you're doing shechita for the eat purpose of eating. Okay, so again, once again, the question is during shechita, I'm doing proper intention regarding the shechita, it's for those who are circumcised. But I have in mind that during shechita, during Shechit, I have in mind that when it will be sprinkled, it will be effect effective for uncircumcised. That's our question. Rav Chista Amar Pasul, Rav Amar Kasher. Rav Chista said that the whole thing is invalid um, because I had in mind all, uh, just only uncircumcised people um, that they would effectuate and not good. 
And the reason he says Pasul is because, in some sense, it is a forceful, it is a meaningful statement to say that the sprinkling will be on behalf of, the, of the, those who are uncircumcised. Because it's an effective statement, therefore it makes it invalid, right? Because it's a meaningful statement, and you can't do that. The uncircumcised cannot have any part in it. So I can't just ignore it. And therefore, the whole thing is invalid. He says it's fine because if I have in mind during the sprinkling that it'll be for uncircumcised people, that's just a meaningless statement. It's like saying I'm doing this for Mickey Mouse. They're not part of the. They're not part of the group at all. They can't. They have nothing to do with Korban Pesach. And since it's it's complete nonsense, we could just ignore it. And therefore, the Korban Pesach is actually valid. Um, so, because I did shechita for those who are circumcised, and then ignore the rest of the statement. Okay, that's the machloket. And now Raba is going to bring uh, a proof, and uh, Rav Chista will reject it. Okay, Raba's proof is a bit long, and the whole beginning of the proof is actually just a braita. This braita has nothing to do with the case that we just said. It's a straightforward braita. Um, uh, let's read the Braita first and then we'll see how he proves it. Amar Abba, Mina Amin Allah, what's my proof? The Tanya, first the Braita. Yachol nifsol b'nei chavora ha-ba'in imo v'dinhu. Now, let's say I have a group and within the group are some circumcised and some uncircumcised people. The Mishnah already said that if I have both in mind, it's okay because some of them can eat it. So it doesn't matter if some people can't eat it. But what, how do I know this? And we're going to try to prove it. Vidinhu. Uh, we're going to learn it from an analogy. Ho'il ve'orla poselet v'tum'a poselet. So we're trying to derive orla, those who are uncircumcised. Um, and that's no good if I have only uncircumcised people in mind. Tum'a also uh, is not pasul. Ma tum'a lo asaba miksat tum'a. Just like regarding impure people, um, it's not uh, uh, the uh, all people. If the, if the whole group is impure, it's not the same as a few people being impure, right? If if the whole group is impure, then the korban is invalid. If only some people are impure, it's okay. So too with uncircumcised, uncircumcised people, um, we should not consider only if, if a few people are uncircumcised, the same as if all people are uncircumcised. If everyone is a, in the group is uncircumcised, then it's invalid. But if only some, it's a mixed mixture, then it's okay. So that's by analogy, it should be fine. And that's exactly what the Mishnah says. However, now if you're going to start opening up analogies, I can bring another analogy. Or uh, maybe why don't you go a different way um, and make a different analogy. I can compare um, uh, people who are uncircumcised with uh, Ziman. That means make, when, I slaughter, when I slaughter it, I have in mind that I'm going to eat it past the time, right? It has to be in that, that, that night, that day, that, uh, that night. Um, if I have in mind, I'm going to eat it tomorrow. Um, so that becomes pigul, outside the time. Now, if I have in mind that I'm only going to eat part of the animal outside the time tomorrow, but part of the animal I'll eat in the right time, I'll eat tonight. Right. Um, in that case, no good. If even only a little bit of the animal I'm I, I intend to eat outside the time, it's pasul. So too, regarding those who are uncircumcised, even if I have on my if, in the group only a few people are uncircumcised, then it should be the same as everyone in the group being uncircumcised, and this should be therefore not good. So now I have two possible analogies. I'm trying to derive a mixed group of circumcised, uncircumcised people. Is it like Tum'ah and therefore valid? Or is it like um, Pigul and therefore invalid? All right, well, let's see. Let's, um, let's deepen our analogy. What, which one has more characteristics that are the same? Well, I should derive something that does not apply to all, uh, all sacrifices from another thing that does not apply to all sacrifices. Um, what is that? Well, the, 
the the law of ritual uh, impurity does not apply to all sacrifices because if I'm impure and I want to send a chatat, I can because I could just uh, send someone. I said, here, here's a messenger. You go and, and, and make this a chatat for me. I don't have to eat it. And so therefore, this only applies to korban Pesach. So too, circumcision. If someone is uncircumcised and they want to bring a different korban, a korban chatat, they can. Um, because they don't have to eat it. They could just send it with someone else. Korban Pesach, however, they have to actually eat it, and therefore, um, they're out. So therefore, we, it's better to compare the uncircumcised person to a Tamer person that they apply to Pesach, but not to other sacrifices. And don't tell me about Pigul, because the law of Pigul applies to all sacrifices across the board. So therefore, the first analogy is better, and this should be permitted. No, but maybe not. I should learn one thing that has no exceptions from another thing that has no exceptions. And don't bring me proof from Tumah, which has an exception. What's the exception? Well, um, uh, generally, someone who's Tameh cannot eat from sacrifices unless the whole community is Tameh. If, if, or most of us, if most people are Tameh, we actually could go and make a Korban Pesach. This is a very interesting halacha for today, because that's the main problem that we have, that we're Tameh. And we're all Tameh Lamit. We don't have a Pada Duma, so we can't go and make sacrifices. But actually, if everyone is Tameh, and more, even most people Tameh, we could go. We can go and uh, build the Mizbeach somewhere in Harabait, and we could start making, uh, making uh, Korban Pesach. I don't recommend this, but uh, technically, halachically, uh, it is allowed. And so we should learn, therefore, um, uh, th therefore that, that the law of Tumah is the exception. And we should instead compare someone who's uncircumcised, who can never eat anything, any, any sacrifice, as there's no exception. Also, pigul, there's no exception. And so therefore, the second one is the better analogy. So which one are we going to do? Tamod Lomar Zot. Okay, so in... Um, uh, therefore, we learn from the, the Pasuk Zot in, um, in Exodus 12, right? It says, um, Zot Chukata Pesach, this is the law regarding Pesach, that uh, uh, Nochri cannot eat it, the next Pasuk, and Malata Oto as Yochalbo. Someone has to be circumcised in order to eat it. So Zot is a limiting word, and it's saying that um, the, 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 the prohibition of an uncircumcised person to eat is limited. Limited to what? Oh, it's limited to a group that's entirely uh, uncircumcised people. But if it's a mixture, then it's okay. So the word zot is coming to teach me that I should make the analogy with the first, with uh, the first analogy with tuma, and not the second analogy with pigul. That's the end of the baraita. Uh, so just to show it picturally here. Um, the Rabbah is bringing the following proof. How do I know? Uh, the, first, the, the, the Baraita, he didn't get to his proof yet. Um, uh, so first, just the, uh, the plain Baraita. How do I know that if I have a group of some, or, uh, some or uncircumcised people and I slaughter it with them in mind, then is that, how do I know that that's okay? Well, I can compare it on the one hand to impure people, and I know some, uh, some of the group of impure people that's valid, or I can compare it to some people, to some of the animal that's past time and that's invalid, which one is a better analogy? Well, on the one hand, this does not apply to offerings, this is no exceptions, and this has both of those, the, uh, um, the, both of those uh, uh, characteristics. So I need the word this, zot, to tell me that the prohibition is limited. So therefore, be more lenient and compare it to impure. That's what the Braita says. Now, the Abba is going to say, the word zot, I don't actually need the word zot to teach me this because I have another pasuk. What's the other pasuk? So he says, my zot, if you think zot is coming to teach me this whole law that we've been talking about, that um, if everyone in the group is, has, has uncircumcised, it's pasul, but if a few, it's okay, that's the limitation. But we can learn that very thing from a pasuk later on, 1248, that says, when it's all uncircumcised, 
everyone in the group is circumcised, then they cannot eat it. And from there, I can infer that if some are uncircumcised, it's okay. So I already have a pasuk that tells me, that gives me the answer. So now the word zot is a limitation that is extra, and I can use it for something else. So I'm going to use it to answer our question. So he's kind of uh, re reinterpreting the Braita. We're going to re learn from the word only if the whole group is uncircumcised, a problem, but if some and some, it's okay. And now, if you think that that's true for Zidika also, that the kula or la miha pasla, that if I have in mind when I'm going to do zirika, that that will be for all only uncircumcised people. Um, and that would be pasul, just like it is pasul if I do shechita, only for uncircumcised people. Tamodomar zot. That's why it says zot as a limitation. Only bishchita hu de kula or la miha pasla, aval zirika, afilu kula or la. So therefore, the problem of uncircumcised people only uh, inheres in the, in the slaughtering. If I have in mind during slaughtering, for only uncircumcised people, it's no good. But if I have in mind that I will do uh, the sprinkling for only uncircumcised people, that's fine. And that's what I learned from Zot. Okay, that was Rabah's proof. Now, V'chi um, Tema, my kula dezrika. If you're wondering uh, why should zirika be more lenient than than shechita, that shechita, if I have in mind uh, for every only for uncircumcised people, is no good. But if I have in mind that I will uh, uh, sprinkle it for uncircumcised people, it's okay. Well, because the end machshevet ochlin bezrika. In general, if I have uh, a uh, an, inva an, an invalidation an invalidation has to do with the people that are eating. That's, a, that's bad during, uh, during slaughter because the slaughter prepares it for eating, but it's okay during zirika because zirika is what effectuates the atonement for them, um, but it does not, directly affect, affect, uh, does not directly affect the eating. And therefore, it uh, makes sense that the shechitan should be more stringent than the zirika. All right. Now, vera chista. Ad raba. Rav chista heard this proof and he says, I think it's the exact opposite. I can take all the data points you said and I can interpret them the opposite way to make to say it's prohibited in our our, our, our case. So the word bechol adel that teaches that um, if it's if all the people are uncircumcised and I have them in mind when I do shechita, it's no good. But if it's only some of them, it's okay. Everyone agrees to that. The Mishnah said that. But during the sprinkling, even if a one person is uncircumcised, and I have in mind that I'm sprinkling for atonement of that one uncircumcised person, it's no good. Um, so, uh, and if you say, why? No, Shechita should be the same as Zedika, and therefore permitted in a mixed group. And I might think, no, only if it's everyone is, uh, is uncircumcised, until everyone circumcised, is uncircumcised, it's, not, it's, it's okay. That's why it comes to say Zot. Yeah, you're right. Uh, Zot comes to, does come to teach that Zedika is different. Um, from Shechita, but it's doing it in the opposite way. Shechita hu de miksata lo pasla val zirika, afilu miksata pasla. Regarding Shechita, that's more lenient, that if some people I have in mind when I'm doing Shechita for a mixed group, that's, an, that's valid. But during Zirika, even if it's only one, two uh, people that are uncircumcised, it's no good. And therefore, Rav Chista says, look, I can use this as a proof from my opinion, my opinion was, if during the Shechita, I have in mind that the sprinkling will be for people who are uncircumcised, it's, uh, it's no good. And see, I can learn that from Zot. Okay, now if you ask Rav Chista, why, why would you assume that Zirika is more stringent than, than the Shechita? Well, there's a good reason. The law mikabat pigul, Ella bizrika. So back to pigul. Pigul is when I have a, when I do something outside of the uh, the wrong time. If I have in mind I'm going to eat this in two days from now. Okay, uh, that's obviously no good. And you can't have a, a machshavah pigul during any of the four steps. 
shechita, kabbalah, holacha, or the zedika. However, the thing with pigul is as follows. If I have in mind when I'm doing shechita, that I'm going I'm, I'm doing shechita to eat this in two days. That's not good. But if I then, um, during holacha, I have a different invalid uh, uh, idea. I'm, I'm doing holacha, I'm uh, taking this so that I'm going to eat it outside of Jerusalem. So that's another invalidation. Well, once I have another invalidation, it's actually no longer pigul. Pigul is only for time. It's still invalid, but not for the reason of pigul because I have another invalidation. The only time it will actually become pigul for sure is if I didn't have any other invalidations until the end. And so it's really only during, during zidika that the pigul hits home. And therefore zidika is the most stringent, is more stringent than the others because that's when the pigul actually takes effect. So that's why zidika is more stringent. And so according to Rav Chista, um, a mixed a mixed uh, group that I have in mind during Shechita is okay. But if I have a mixed group in mind during Zidik, during Shechita is okay. If I have a mixed group in mind that during for Zidika, it's no good. That's Rav Chista's proof. Okay. And finally, Rav Asher is going to reject both of them. Matkif la Rav Asher. kula mashma. You've both been assuming that the one that says v'chol arel, it means all of everyone is uncircumcised. And therefore, it's when everyone is uncircumcised while I'm doing shechita, that's when it's invalid. But if a few people are, it's okay. But the word all could also mean any. Dilma hai v'chol arel, mashma kol dehu orla. Right? Maybe it means that each and every person um, uh, it has to be circumcised. And therefore, if any of them are not circumcised, it's no good. That's an equally valid way of, of reading the word kol. And therefore, katab zot, kula orla, lo pasla, lo shena b'shrita velo shena bizrika. And when the uh, pasu comes and says the word zot, that means that it's only invalid when all the people are adika kula or la lo pasa until it's entirely uncircumcised. It's okay, um, right? So this is a much more lenient way of reading it. And in this reading, I need actually need the word zot to tell me um, the basic law of shechita. And therefore, I'm not going to learn that zidika is anything different than the than the shechita. So whether shechita or zidika. There is no difference. And therefore, you cannot use this zot as a proof, not for you, Rabba, and not for you, Rav Chista. And instead, since Rav Asher rejected that, Rav Asher is going to offer his own derivation for the machloket between Rav Chista and Rabba, and we will begin with that tomorrow. Baruch Adonai le'olam, amen, ve'am.